Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and this is part 24 of our Unity series on making a point-and-click adventure game. In this episode, we're going to really look at um, level design versus uh, the mechanics of the game. We're not going to be diving into C-sharp, really. We're not going to be creating a lot of new prefabs or anything like that, but we're just going to be looking at how to make the design, how to make your level sensible to your player so that when they're trying to do something, it's very logical for what they want to do. So to start with this, we can look at one of the biggest issues in the game is that when you go, to, say, to this table and then you want to turn around and return to the middle of the room, uh, like turn off gizmos because you wouldn't be seeing all that, you don't really know where you can click. You can, you know, try up here in the middle, up, oh, and eventually you get there, but it's confusing. And it can lead to frustration for the player. Anytime your player wants to do something and they try even once, something maybe maybe they'll give you once or twice but if they're you know trying different things and it doesn't work um, to, to do what they want to do it's going to be a frustrating experience for them so what we want to do is make things very obvious um, as to how how they can do them you don't have to make obviously the solution to your puzzle super obvious but if there's three parts to the puzzle it should be fairly obvious that they are parts that can be interacted with Maybe it, maybe there's extra parts that you can also interact with that are, you know, kind of red herrings, but you want to make sure the player knows what they can do stuff with. If they go to a, you know, walkthrough on the game and they're like, oh, I didn't realize I could pick up that wrench, that's a bad design issue. That's not a failure on the player's part. So you want to make sure to avoid those types of things. So one way to do this um, is visually. In fact, it's probably the, one of the best ways to do this. And so what I would recommend, particularly for this center uh, node that we have, if we zoom over in our scene view here, in fact, I'm going to shrink this down because we're going to be maximizing on play now anyway. Let me focus in here on our Canva. Actually, I'll go to the room center node, focus on that. We see that it's this circle here. One thing we could do, we could actually make this circle much bigger because we're really going to be going to the center of the room from... You know, we're either standing here or way over here, so we can make this a little bit bigger and it's not going to conflict with our other nodes. Like, we can actually do that and see the size, so we can make this pretty good size. Let's do that. I'm going to go room center, our radius, and we're going to we'll double it in size. We'll go to 4. Not 44. <laughs> Just to 4. So that means that there's, first off, there's a lot more area that we can be clicking on. Now the second thing we can do to make this even more obvious that this is where you can click versus going, say, all the way to the can, is we can give it a light. I'm going to go Game Object, Light, Spotlight. I'm going to add this to our room center. Actually, add it in there. There we go. And it's at zero, 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 which is good. I'm going to pull it up. I'll just use the, uh, the Y handle here. Pull it up about that far. I'm going to turn on, if this little sunshine here turns on the actual lighting for your room. The other thing we can do, you can see there's a little bit of a spotlight here. If I zoom in, you can see there's a little bit there. We can make it more intense. Mm -hmm. I'll triple the intensity here. And the other thing we can do is our currently our we have a directional light as well. This is like kind of the sunlight coming into the room. Uh, we can turn this down quite a bit. We'll make this 0.5, let's say. So now it's a little bit dimmer overall. Lastly, I want to jump back to our room center spotlight. I'm going to increase the angle of it because like like we see here, we've got a pretty big space that we can move to. So I want to kind of reflect that with the spotlight itself. So if we take the spot angle, and we're going to we'll double that as well. We'll double it to 60. So now we see that that pretty much fills that up. So now if we hit play, we go over to the table. And now we rotate around. We see we have this nice little glow here letting us know, hey, this is where you can click to move to the center of the room again. And sure enough, we do. And from here, you know, we can, we can actually add spotlights to this table and to this table to let us know, but we do actually have that visual cue too of, oh, there's something there. 
Um, so we can probably go to it and look at it. Whereas here, there's obviously nothing, just a big empty patch of floor. So it's good to have that cue of saying, oh, if you click here, you can, you know, move to it. The other issue that we keep kind of running into is that whenever I go to this table over here in particular, because there's only one object on it, it's pretty much a situation where you're going to go to it, you're going to interact with it, and then you want to go back to this room. But you see that I can't click there. And that's because how we have it set up right now, we are in this prop node and the only information it has is that we can right click to go back to this table node. And then from here we can turn around and go back. But it's a little bit it's a little bit um, illogical for us because there's nothing else we're going to do. There's only this one can. So why would we ever really need to back out and then turn around? We would probably just want to turn around and go right back to this um, to this light. And so for that reason, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to our corner box here. And I'm going to actually jump to our can prop. And we see here we have this list of reachable nodes. In a lot of cases, you might not ever need to put one into a prop, but in a case like this, I'm actually going to take our room center and make it reachable from the can. And the reason for that is that now if we hit play, I can oops, go back to our room center and then go over to here, go to the can. I could interact with it in theory. Right now we don't have the key, so I'm not doing anything, but I am trying to interact with it. And now I can just go back and go right back to the room center. Even further now, if I go here, get the gold key, here I do back up. And like I say, that's because we have three different potential things we could be interacting with. Now I can go here, go to the can, turn it on, and again, go right back to the room center. So again, that's, that's another situation where you wouldn't, you don't want the player at the can, then try to go back. They can't do it. They can't figure out why they can't. They're getting frustrated. That, that leads to a bad player experience. So that's just a couple of really simple ways that you can add a little bit more, um, a little bit more logic, a little bit more sensibility to your level design. And one of the best ways to really determine if your level design is good is just to play test it. Uh, if you can have other people play test it, that's great, but even having yourself do it. Like you see here, I was, I've been building this game this entire time, and so I know how it works. I know that when I go to that can, I can't get back to the room center right away, but I still try to do it inherently just because I'm in that game space at that point. So even testing it out yourself really can show you where things aren't working the way you quite thought they were when you were building the game. So I highly recommend uh, doing that as as much as you can as you're building your game even you know every time you add a new feature test it out see how it's working with the rest of your game maybe something isn't working quite the way you thought it was maybe you don't click where you think you would or you don't want to do what you originally thought the feature was going to do that can give you a lot of answers and help you make your level design better for when you do publicly play test it and have other people trying it out helping them to um have a better experience overall so that you're getting the best possible feedback you can from them as well. So anyway, this pretty much wraps up this video series. Like I say, I'm going to do a few appendix videos about um, things like waypoints. Um, also looking at this idea that when you, I'll quickly show you one other thing I've been thinking about, which is that when you go to this table and then you go back here, you do this kind of 180 spin. And that's because right now we have it set up to align the camera um, to a specific transform, both in rotation and position. I'm probably going to look at a way to make that this room hold your ro rotation so that you're not spinning around like crazy. Um, but there's going to be a few videos like that that I'll do, but it's not going to be on this two video a week basis any longer. So anyway, this is the end of this, like I say, full series. Um, if you've followed along from the beginning, I thank you very much for watching. If you've just been kind of watching items here and there, I thank you as well. And um, let me know if there's any other topics in this, um, either in this particular genre or other tutorials that you'd like to see on the channel. And please subscribe below. Thanks again for watching so much, and I will see you guys later.